on. Ah, it's doing it again, you see. Oh, it's arcing and sparking in there. Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is the Bosch WFK2801. I just turned it on and it just did a really weird glitch. So hopefully it's okay. This is the other machine, WFF1800. It's just washing in the background. So that's where the noise is coming from. 40 degree colored, soap is in, laundry's in. I think it could be a switch issue because last time, last week, yeah, it wasn't last time I did a load, it was last week. Turned it on, turned it on, and it ran for a bit and then stopped. And it washed the soap down into it. So I wonder, is there an issue with the switch just from feeling that and how that's behaved there? So what I did a minute ago was I turned it on, pressed start, and as I walked away, it went, oh, it didn't do that, you see. It just went zip, 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 zip. So I might need to have a look at this switch. It might have an intermittent fault, or there might be absolutely nothing wrong with it. And it might just, well, it, no, it, it's definitely not clicking in properly if it's flashing like that. We'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. It's doing it again. Maybe it's settled in now when I bring my camera out. What's happening was I was pressing the switch on. There it is. Look, it started to do it. It's arcing in that switch. See? And then it switches off. Nope. Gently on. Yeah, you see. It was working. It's done. It's done a wash and a rinse this morning. I'll try it on a forty wash and see. Maybe if it vibrates, it'll cut off. I don't know. Let's see what happens. It's finished the wash successfully. The button feels fine now, so it's a bit iffy. I might take it apart and have a look at it. I have another load of laundry to do, so I might as well do it now before I fix it. 60, very difficult to see, 60 cotton anyway, on. Ah, it's doing it again, you see. Oh, it's arcing and sparking in there. That's not great. I've pressed it on more firmly this time, if that means anything. Let's see, that's not great, I don't like that. So previously it's cut out in the middle of a wash and it's failed to start a couple of times, just like that. I'm kind of nervous that it's going to damage the control board inside. That's the real issue because if the power is kind of um, shorting on it, it might, it won't surge, but it'll, I don't know what it, I don't really don't know what it could do to the board, but uh, I don't want it to do anything bad. I think I have a spare button for this from another machine. Okay, I think I could pull it out, get the screws out from each side, and that might get the top off. I only just need to get in, just in a little bit, so it's not too bad. These machines weigh a ton. There we go. There's little cover plates on each side. Little cover plates, you have to just pop them off with a knife or something. And the reality is that, I don't know why I keep putting them back in, because you never see them in this location. This one's got posy head screws. Screwdriver's out in the garage, so I'll do it by hand. I can't remember if this one lifts off or if I need to take screws out of the back as well. Might, oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so it, just, it flips up and it'll stay in position there. The lid says 23rd of September 2000, but that might not be the original lid off this machine. Although it might be actually. Let's look for some other dates on it. Ah, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off the switch first. Good idea. Yeah, there's a date on the drum of 2000 as well, making this machine 21 years old, which is younger than I thought it would be. Okay, next step, take this drawer out, pop that down, lift that out. In here, there should be three screws. Again, with the Phillips head or posi head. I haven't got a magnetic tip on this screwdriver. So with a flat bladed screwdriver, I just lift this side out and then just pop along the top. It just pops it out. There's little legs that just snap in position. And then it should, it should, it should pop out at the bottom. There we go, and here. stuck on 
There's another one down here, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is all um, an electronic switch. Some kind of, not it. I don't know, some kind of micro switches, but the main switch is here. Oh, it's got a light as well. It's a different one. Ah, it's not the same. Far more complex. Look, this thing. Yeah, that's a real, a real pain. Okay, well, let's get into it then. So there's a little tab. There's a little tab here on the top, and if I push that in, this should just lift up like that. I think I've done this before, but I haven't. Why do you have to be complex? This one is probably similar to the switch on the Bosch WFF1800, which is slightly different because it it has a door switch here as well. So you push to do the door and it's got this thing here because there's a cable, a Bowden cable that goes down to the door or a Bowden cable, depending on how you pronounce words. Okay, so let's just try. Let's just try taking them off. Let's just see if they wouldn't just clip in there like that. They would. Okay, so they would fit if this would only mount, but it won't. It won't mount here, you see. Almost mount there, like that, but it won't. Um, it, feels, it feels very close, you know. It feels very close, but I know, you know what? It's holding that in. It's hooked on something there. It's a bit floppy though. We'd lose the light function because we'd lose this, this light, but temporarily that might be okay. No, we're losing that there. What's it locking into on the back? It's just got a little hammer on the back there. That won't do. Would do if we way to secure it. It's remarkably close to where we want to be. Just need something else in there. Okay, well, let's see if we can. I'm never going to get a spare one of those, you know. Maybe you can. It looks like it comes apart to the bench. It's got a third switch as well, probably for a door interlock that isn't present on this one. To the bench. Okay, so we don't really know where we're going here, but let's look for a part number. 306-1081-AC3, maybe? Don't see any other part numbers on it. There's a neon light in this little crystal or prism here. You can see a resistor for it. How am I going to break in here? Okay, there's a tab there. Oh, I heard something there. Now it rattles. That's no good. Oh, it looks like there was another plug there. Like, as it stands, it's broken. This is the same old logic that I apply to most things that I'm trying to fix. Is once it's broke, it's broke. You can't can't make it more. Well, I don't know what I'm doing inside. You can't make it more broken. Definitely sounds more broken. Ah, okay, it's soldered shut, you know. Lost a few pieces of plastic there. I wonder, do I need to disconnect the solder to get into it? That sounds terrible. Or can I push these guys out? Okay, it's coming apart. Oh dear. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Shouldn't really have bent that like that. So there's the contact and it's completely scorched. Like you could clean it, but here's the other one from the floor. And it's also a bit ratty looking. So it puts me in a bit of a pickle for this machine because uh, what am I supposed to do, hey? I need to find a way to make that other switch fit in here. So I could just try and trim a bit out of that box there somehow. Kind of annoyed at myself a little bit. Yeah, some kind of a chop and chop and change there might be the job. The front is the same profile, same height. So I could just chop out a bit of this and fit this in. Be ugly, but it would work. I wouldn't have the neon though, that's the only thing. I fitted the switch from the 1401 back in. It's a bit like it could pop out, I guess, but Somehow, if you're just pushing on the switch, it seems to work okay. So I'll offer up the front and see if it'll snap into place and work. Because I'm kind of getting late here, really, is what it is. Well, 
that's popped out now already, so where does that leave me? In fact, I don't know how to deal with this. It's on. Tuck it in there. That switch is completely redundant. The machine stays on. Switch it on. Everything else is working. For now, this is a solution. Yeah, the rest of it's working. It's just this button and light is redundant. So it's left on and it's set on. Um, whereas with the other one, when it was on, it was arcing. This one, it's just on. I could have it dangling out. Uh, it's kind of dangerous, but there's no bare exposed wires. Um, well, I don't really want to do that either. So let's just tuck it in there. We'll know it's there. Better hide it somewhere good like that. It's all plastic, you know, what are you going to do? There's not much more to it. You tell me that I'm an idiot there. That's a bad idea, probably. Just tucking it in like that. All I'm going to do is put three screws back in here, fold the top down, put two screws back in, push it back into position and leave it run and just use the on-off switch on the wall. Just make sure I don't leave it on this. What I might do is swap it out for the, I think I have a 2001 or WFF 2000 or WFF 2001 and do a bit of a rotation for a while and see if I can come up with a better solution. For now, that's it. That's going to work and it's a... Uh, it's a bodge. It's not a bodge. It just doesn't have a on-off switch. But you know, this is a physical on-off switch, so it's not it's not a digital switch or anything like that that's been stuck on. So it shouldn't be using any residual electricity or anything like that. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a it's an okay fix. Tell me I'm wrong. Questions or comments, leave them below. If you like the video, tell me about it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more chaotic bodges after midnight like this. Otherwise, comment below is always welcome. Thanks for watching. See you later.